Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The historic federal buyout of the Trans, Can or Trans Mountain Pipeline and expansion are definitely a benefit to Albertans now, but this hasn't addressed the systemic issues with the regulatory process. Governments shouldn't have to buy projects to get them completed. Chris Bloomer, head of the Canadian Energy Pipeline Association, said, we do not believe that this outcome will instill investor confidence in Canada, sentiments echoed by other industry stakeholders. To the Premier, what about future projects requiring regulatory approval? Will future energy products have to be bought out to move forward? The Honourable Deputy Premier. Well, the Canadian Energy Pipeline Association also said that they're very pleased that the Trans Mountain Expansion Project will be constructed. Through its completion, Trans Mountain will create thousands of jobs, deliver economic benefits across this entire country. Canada will continue to need major pipeline projects to deliver responsibly produced Canadian energy to markets around the world while ensuring a fair price for our resources, Mr. Speaker. Again, yesterday was a victory. I know people keep wanting to cheer for defeat, but this side of the House and all Albertans are excited that the fact that we're finally going to get a fair return for our resource and the first new pipeline to Tidewater since the 1950s. First supplemental. We agree that it's a great, a great thing that happened and we have concerns about what's going to happen in the future. As a partner in expansion, Alberta is now committed for up to $2 billion. Warren Maybe, director of the Queen's Institute for Energy and Environmental Policy, expects strong backlash from groups we were supposed to get social license from. But Alberta's carbon tax is intended to reduce emissions and since pipelines are far more energy efficient and environmentally safe than rail or road for transporting oil to Tidewater. To the Premier, how much of Alberta's up to $2 billion investment will come from carbon tax revenues? Uh, Minister of Energy. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, you know, the commitment is uh, correct, uh, up to $2 billion, but the commitment also is not a penny of, that, uh, of those dollars will come, go uh, or be expended until oil is flowing in that pipeline, Mr. Speaker. So it's, the pipeline is going to get built, and uh, it could be zero, it could be $2 billion. There's a range in there. First supplemental. Former Trans Canada Executive Dennis McConaughey recently commented, it does raise a lot of questions about how did we ever get ourselves into this situation where federal approvals aren't sufficient for private sector capital to want to take on the completion of the project. To the Environment Minister, please help us understand the disconnect between the Alberta Climate Leadership Plan, the social license relied on to secure regulatory approval, and the situation we find ourselves in, where Alberta and Canada are at the mercy of BC in getting the Trans Mountain Pipeline built. Great question. Donald, Minister of Environment and Parks. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And there isn't a disconnect because those, uh, 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 that pipeline and uh, Line 3 were approved precisely because of the Climate Leadership Plan, Mr. Speaker. And now we are in a position, uh, uh, due to our oil sands emissions cap, where we can say uh, to our neighbours, to our trading partners, uh, that uh, the oil that flows through that pipeline is uh, uh, subjected to a carbon price. It is also uh, uh, one of the only energy producing jurisdictions in the world that has a cap on emissions, Mr. Speaker. And more to the point, we're also investing in innovation to reduce the carbon in the barrel. $1.4 billion worth of investments in innovation, Mr. Speaker, that's something we should all be proud of. Thank you. Second 